I'm standing in the library with you. You can hear the turning of newspaper pages. People talking softly. There's a man standing beside me. He's looking in the crime section now. He reaches to pick up a book. Opens it. Leaves through a few pages. Then puts it back on the shelf. He's wandering off to the right. Pick up the book he looked at. It's on the third shelf down. It's called Dreams of Darkness by Reginald Hill. I'm opening it to page 88. She set off back at a brisk pace in a rutted and muddy lane about a furlong from the house. She thought she heard a sound ahead of her. She paused. She could hear nothing, but her straining eyes caught a movement in the gloom. Someone was approaching. A foot splashed in a puddle. Sometimes when you read things, it seems like you're remembering them. Close the book. Put it back to where you found it. Go to the right. Walk past the main desk. Through the turnstile. One of the librarians recognized her from the photograph. Now up the stairs. The art and music libraries to the right. Oh, you see the paint peeling off the ceiling? It's quite beautiful. It looks like sculpture. Be careful, don't let the door slam. I started these recordings as a way to remember to make life seem more real. I can't explain it. But then the voice became someone else, a separate person hovering in front of me like a ghost. Sit down at the end of the table. I'll go get the book. Wait here. It must have been signed out. The book that I was looking for has a picture of this room, the way it used to be. The old museum cases lining the walls, filled with specimens and stuffed birds. The head of a polar bear, with its mouth open, growling. There's a book on the table here. It's on René McGree. Here's a painting I just saw in New York. The Menaced Assassin. It's kind of creepy. Someone's left a note between the pages. Someone is following you. There's less time than I thought. Get up and walk towards the door. Down the stairs. Turn to the left. I'm going to go outside. Try to follow the sound of my footsteps so that we can stay together. 
going to turn right onto Whitechapel High Street. Turn to the right. Past the Whitechapel Art Gallery. Past the newsstand. Killer waited an hour. The Kentucky Fried Chicken. Turn to the right. Gunthorpe Street. A man just went into the side door of the pub. A man just went into the side door of the pub. I sometimes follow men late at night when I'm coming home from the tube station. I pick a man that's going my way and then stay behind him. It makes me feel safer going through the dark tunnels to have someone near me. It's like a guardian angel or a secret protector or something. What about this dame who's passing herself off as Carmen? I have a long red-haired wig on now. I look like the woman in the picture. If he sees me now, he'll recognize me. Found in her bag two cassette tapes with a receipt and a tape recorder. There's a plane going over. Dogs are barking somewhere. It's cold today. I have a hat on, but it still doesn't cover up. The wind gets around my neck. I found her photograph in the tube station, beside one of those photo booths. A woman with long red hair staring out at me. I put it in my pocket. I don't know why. She reminded me of my sister. It didn't seem right to leave it there on the ground. We're going to cross Wentworth Street here. Look both ways. Then follow the sidewalk to the right. Have you ever had the urge to disappear? To escape from your life, even for just a little while? Like looking out of one room and into a different one. I remember the first time I saw it. We were driving to the mountains. Sometimes I just want to disappear, I said. You freaked out. After we did, we thought it to myself. She wears a dark coat and a beige skirt. She looks in the windows as she passes the stores. She knows that his office is close by. Through left onto brick wall. Follow the sun to up. I'm behind someone else now. A new companion. They have a duffel coat, running shoes, red shopping bag. talking to anybody all day, except when I pay for a book or a cup of tea or something. It's like you're invisible. Today when a woman bumped into me, he didn't seem to notice. I thought immediately that maybe I was.
keep walking straight on Brick Lane. The mannequins are wearing green today. Yesterday they were dressed in pink. I bought some food here. Turn left at this corner. We're on Fashion Street now. The shopkeeper on Brick Lane described her as tall, with long red hair and an American accent. This is the street that I saw in the book. A narrow lane with children watching the camera. Only there was a lot of fog in the air and cobblestones. The book tells the story of a man who lived in one of these houses. For 20 years, he searched for the woman he loved, waiting for her to come back. How can we just walk over the footsteps and not remember? There's a lime green car parked across the street. You can see the church steeple, scaffolding, graffiti in the wall, barbed wire, broken windows, men with guns in black uniforms and face masks, fires all around me. They saw a flaming sword held in a hand coming out of a cloud with a point hanging directly over the city. There they saw hearses and coffins in the air. And there again heaps of dead bodies lying unburied. <laughs> this is commercial street. There's a crosswalk to the left, just around the corner. Wait for the cars to stop, and then cross over when you can. I'll meet you on the other side. 